Chris Menard here. Let me show you some Excel functions. If you're an HR professional, you should know. But also, if you just want to master Excel, here's some great functions. I'm going to start off in H1 with equals T-O-D-A-Y. The today function will always return today's date. It's reading the clock in your computer. So tomorrow it'll say November 1st. You can also add and subtract days on the today function. So there's November 1st automatically added one. Also, I would like to know how many years of service our employees have worked. A couple different ways to do this. I could take the current date minus the date of hire. There's 884 days. And then I could simply take that and divide by 365 days in a year. And it gives me 2.42 years. But what I really want to do is just see two years. Then I want to know how many months because I don't want to figure out what 0.42 is as months. And then how many days? So there's an Excel function. If you go to formulas and hit insert function, make it, make it show all, and go down to the letter D, there is a function called dated if. Now, you'll never see it in your Excel functions. D-A-T-E-D-I-F. It's not in there. Cancel. The dated if function is a function that was created to pull in Lotus 1, 2, 3 workbooks into Excel or convert them. So you have to manually type this function out. And I'm going to take the date of hire, comma, the current date, comma. I'm looking for the number of years. I'm going to do the letter Y in quotations. It's not case sensitive. There's my two years. Let's test this real quick. I'm going to make this 6, 15, 2014 there are three years I'm now going to come back into this function I'm going to make the date of hire a mixed reference I'm going to make today's date an absolute reference that way I can pull this over and this time instead of looking for the number of years I'm going to look for the number of months 40 months if you're going to test this here we go that date minus that date. Make it comma style. 1,235 days and 30 days in a month. Notice that's my point. You don't want to take 30 days in a month because 30 times 12 is 360. So that 41 is wrong. That's why dated if month is better. But I only want to see the number of months since the three years, so I'm going to do YM four months. And then for the number of days, there's the letter D. Oops, my bad. Let me fix that. There's the letter D. There's that 1,235. I'm going to do MD. So this employee, if today is November 1st and their date of hire, is in cell G4. They've worked three years, four months, and 17 days. Let's test it. I'm going to have them starting on 11-1-2016. I hope I get one year. Perfect. Make it 11-2-2016. There you go. It's working. Highlight all three. Autofill down. You know how to autofill. I'm not going to do that. Another function that I really like is I want to know how many working days are in the year 2017. Over in column E, I've listed all the company holidays for 2017. I'm going to do equal symbol, net. There are two net work days functions. This one, the top one, has always been around. It'll work in this example, but I actually prefer this new one they have. Start date, comma, end date, comma. Here's why I prefer this one. When you get to weekend, it actually lists all these weekend options. They were smart enough to make the number one Saturday and Sunday because that is most companies have Saturday and Sunday off, comma. What are your holidays? E5 through E. It is okay to include blanks. 13 is correct, but I'm going to go ahead and stop it. In case I don't have all the holidays in, 
I'm going to stop it at 17 so I can add more holidays. There are 251 work days for the year 2017 for this organization. You can also use it to figure out, let's go make this absolute reference, F4, F4. You can also use this to figure out how many work days are there in the first quarter. 63, there's January through March. And let's go look for the last quarter. Should be less days because we have those Thanksgiving and Christmas, and there is. This would also be handy if you told somebody, I'm going to give you 12 days to finish a project. They're an hourly employee. But the issue is, I said 12 days. Well, you, you, you're assuming they have 12 days, but you got to figure in the weekends. you got to figure in these days off. And we also forgot to put in January 1, 2018. So they really only have six days to do it. So there's network days. Opposite of networking days, and when I met with, I had a training class and I had some HR professionals in it, they told me that they have employees retire and they have earned, they have accrued vacation, time, they have accrued PTO, time off. I'm going to give Bill Davis, he's the employee, he wants to retire. Bill Davis wants to retire on January 2nd, 2018. Here are company holidays, and I even threw in January 1, 2018, which is a Monday. Because Bill gets paid for that day. He's a full-time employee. Our policy is, if Bill wants to, he can use those 22 days and leave the company prior to January 2nd. So the question is, what day would his last work day be? And I thought it was a great question, and I knew it had to do with how many working days are left, but it's not net work days. It is workday.intl. So this is something new I learned, and I figured it out. So double-click it. What's tricky about this is start date is actually his retirement date, comma, how many accrued PTO days do we owe Bill for? You can't put in cell D5. It has to be negative D5. Comma, Bill works Monday through Friday. Comma, here are all the holidays. And even if they've happened in the past, because I'm assuming that today is November 1st up in G2. So even if they've happened in the past, it's okay to select them all. And when I press enter, I got November 28th will be Bill's last day of work. After that, we'll never see him again. He's retiring. If you want to test this, here's how I would test it. Since Bill wants to retire on January 2nd, 2018, and right now he has 22 vacation days, well, let's give him zero because I should get January 2nd, 2018, which is a Tuesday. And I do. Let's give him one day of vacation. 1229. So 1229 is a Friday. He works, he works on Friday. When he's done with the day, Saturday he's off, Sunday he's already off with pay, Monday's the holiday he gets paid, and then his one vacation day kicks in for the second. So 1229 would be his last day. One more, let's just make it 12 days. Chat shows 1212. Let's see if that's right. I'm gonna just I'm gonna manually count these. There's three days for that week, plus five is eight days, plus three is 11, and Tuesday would be the 12th, Tuesday, January 2nd. There you go, so it is working. There's that formula, workday.intl. I don't like really long videos, and I've already gone over nine minutes, so what I'm going to do is there's four more functions that I want to cover for HR professionals, so I'm going to make a second video and go ahead and stop this one. But thank you for your time.